Scott, we've uh, done a story on dividing Jerusalem. You've uh, talked with Yossi Klein and Levy about the 1967 war. And then there's a story that you and Nedra actually did. You mm. toured what's called Mahane Yehuda, uh, Jerusalem's open air market. What was that like walking through all those stalls? And, and, and taste testing all that food. That's right. I, that was an overwhelming experience when it came to actual physically tasting the food that's made there uh, and grown not made there but grown throughout Israel and then brought to this marketplace right. mm -hmm. with Jews and Arabs side by side uh -huh. shopping with their shopping bags talking to one another uh, conducting commerce and and no issues no problems in the marketplace known as the shuk now I can say it that way as a Scotsman <laughs> but then I've been corrected by Americans say it's not shuk it it is shuk <laughs> <laughs> well here's that story as Scott and Nedra Go through the shuk and see prophecy come alive. It's Jerusalem's most famous market, and like so many other places in the city, there's nothing ordinary about it. Here we are in the city of Jerusalem. Absolutely. About to cross a very well-known, historically known, Jaffa Road. About a mile and a half down the road is the old city's Jaffa Gate. In the late 1800s, a few brave Jews established homes here a long way from the protection of the city walls. Today you would never even imagine such a thing, but when they moved out of the old city, they were moving to these secured kind of neighborhoods. And that's why the name of the market is called Machane Yehuda. It's named after that neighborhood that was built in 1887. Jaffa Road connects Jerusalem to the Mediterranean seaport at Jaffa, considered by some the oldest harbor in the world. Do you realize that the cedars from Lebanon that were imported by David and then Solomon, they had to come from Jaffa into Jerusalem. Now it's a pedestrian mall with a beautiful European light rail going through it. My wife Nedra and I joined Hannah Ben Haim on a walk through the Shuk on a busy Friday as shoppers prepared for the Sabbath. It's Shabbat and we have to buy challah. Challah is the braided Shabbat bread. Traditionally, you would buy two of them. Because on the Friday, when the children of Israel were in the desert, they always had a double portion. One spicy olive. That's good and spicy. <laughs> of course, the olive is part of the symbol of Israel. Dozens of countries and cultures are represented in the shuk, brought here by Jews returning to the land from more than 100 countries. An Iranian Jew started a spice shop in Jerusalem in 1953. Today, his grandsons still run the shop. So three generations mixing spices and selling spices here in Jerusalem from Iran. An estimated 200,000 people visit the shuk each week, rich and poor, young and old, religious and secular, as well as Jews and Arabs shop in the market. But it's had its share of tragedy, too. That says remember, to remember. July 30, 1997. Suicide bombers killed 16 people here and wounded almost 200. Terror attacks in the market virtually destroyed business, so the municipality reinvented the shuk to make it one of the trendiest places in the city. Restaurants, bistros, even nightlife is here. It's obviously so, been very successful. So you see all things work together for good. This tragedy brought new About life. One religious Jew summed up the shuk for us. He said, if you want to talk to God, go to the Western Wall. But if you want to see God at work, go to the Shuk. And that's exactly what we saw.